Hello everyone. I'm so grateful to have this time together with you to continue in our lessons about tabernacle. Last time we spoke about the wall. We said that the wall, its work was to, pre, uh, to divide inside and outside. We said it was to, uh, to divide the holy things and the unholy. Today we are continuing with another a part of the tabernacle which is the door. The door was very strategic. It was set on the east of the tabernacle. In the Bible, the word east have a significant, have a real meaning. The sun rises at the east. And when the sun rises, what happens? And now from this time, man works, uh, starts working. And as they start working, this means then God is not at work. When we see from the Bible, people when the people were at the work, God was not working. And now there are wise men who are coming from east, coming to uh, uh, Bethlehem to meet together with Jesus. The problem with these people, with these wise men, is that even though they were given a star, when the star had gone away, these people entered into the world of their works. As they lived their life, they lived working and doing something for their life. Even this time, as they are coming to meet together with Jesus Christ, who is the true door, they could not come briefly and in a haste because inside their thoughts, there was their works. God cannot work with them who have still their thought come arise. That's why God allowed them first to meet together with King Herod, so that also after this, they can go and meet together with Jesus. King Herod is doing the work of removing the work of these servants in their heart. If they bring their own works, their own diligence, their own goodness before Jesus, this, the things of them can never be received by Jesus. That's why when they went through uh, to the Herod's palace, the time they brought a big problem among the children of Israel. Because after this, they reported to Herod that another king was born. King Herod could not share his glory with any other person. That's why in the heart of King Herod, wrath and he felt so much disappointed. Why? Because his glory was being tempered with. King Herod was the one who was chosen by people. He was appointed by their own man emperor to come and lead the, the land of Israel. That's why Herod could not think that from the Jews, from the people of Israel, another king can come arise. When we think about it deeply, the servants, this uh, uh, shepherd, if they have to come to before Jesus, they cannot come to before Jesus bringing their own way. Until Herod, they have to empty everything that they had in their heart, and from this time, they can follow the, uh, they can follow the star without having their own thoughts coming arise. They can only follow the star and thus people can come where Jesus Christ is. Even though Herod, through the scribes, realized that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, he was the one who was to come and save the whole world, Herod, in the heart of Herod, there was so much works. He wanted to remain as king. He wanted to guide continually. That's why this Herod cannot come to Jesus to receive salvation, but is the one who want to come and demolish what God have done. People in the East, they want to remain their own works. They want to remain their own glory. They want to do everything for themselves. In the East is the place where God does not work, but Satan is at work. When we see the Bible continually, G. John the Baptist, when he was in the world, one time he knew that the disciples were not standing knowing who Jesus is. But this John the Baptist wanted to show uh, to the disciples who Jesus is. That's why he was not the one who was standing on the side of them, but is the one who is rebuking them and leading them to Jesus Christ. 
on the side of Jesus, John the uh, before John the Baptist, everything else is on their in the east side. But after John the Baptist, he was the one who was calling people to come into the west where Jesus Christ was. After Cain had met uh, killed uh, Abel, that time Cain met together with God. After he had conversation with God, he went to the east of the land of Eden. What does it mean? Now Cain have gone to the side of walking. He's not the one who is coming to the land of Eden. In the Eden, in the land of Eden, everything was being prepared there by God. But he's the one who is moving from west, going to the east, going to the side of his own works. When he met together with God, then he's the one who have to repent and he have to turn his heart toward Eden. But Cain, he's the one who is following his own way. In the land of Eden, uh, in the land of on the east, then he have to work, he have to labor, he have to go through much pain. But if he have to enter into the land of uh, Eden, then here he have to enter to the perfect peace under the preparation of God. When we see continually, God, he is the one who is opening our eyes so that we can see the east. When we see the gate of the tabernacle, it was so much decorated. The reason why it was so decorated is so that everyone, even from afar, could realize and also could recognize it. It was not its colors they were totally different from the colors of the wall. This means what? The people who are surrounding the, uh, the tabernacle on the side of the east, west, north, and south, people who are in the e west, north, and south, even though they would like them uh, to have another gate, it was not possible. Why? Because gate was only one, which was Jesus Christ. Gate, in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible is saying, he, Jesus Christ is saying that he is the door. And door of the tabernacle, no one who cannot see it. You see, the door, the reason why it was decorated, it was that anyone from anywhere can come unto this door. And whoever comes can always receive our what? salvation. When we see our eyes from our birth, it, we cannot see clearly. It has a rug. In the book of Matthew chapter 7, it's saying that we are the people who have the rug. That's why our judgment are always wrong. When we see ourselves, continually we live our life judging not according to the knowledge, not according to the wisdom of God, not according to the righteousness of God. We say, when we see Jesus Christ, many people, even though Jesus Christ is very open, many people could not recognize Jesus Christ. Why? Because in their heart there is a new way, there is another path which was not originated from Jesus Christ, from God. When we see there is Nicodemus, Nicodemus, even though Jesus Christ said unto him about John chapter 3 verse 16, he's the one who cannot realize Jesus Christ in his heart. The heart of Nicodemus was filled with any, many other things apart from Jesus Christ. That's why even though Jesus Christ is very, is very colorful, even though Jesus Christ is telling him everything openly, Nicodemus, he's not able to see clearly, he's not able to see Jesus Christ one by one. From the beginning, a gate is, uh, from the beginning, gate is very uh, colorful, as I have said. This gate which is very colorful, people when they see it, they can recognize it easily. One time, John saw Jesus Christ passing by, and he said, Hey, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ is showing them, Ah, if you really want to go to heaven, there is no any other way apart from that gate. That is the gate. Wait, don't you look at that door. 
Everyone, please don't hold unto your own thoughts. Why don't you hold and uh, behold unto the door, which is the only way? When he was driven together with his disciples, after he said, "Behold, the Lamb of God," uh, uh, we can see that uh, uh, Andrew, the brother to Peter, also followed Jesus. Why did he follow Jesus? He followed Jesus after seeing the true door unto heaven. Ah, uh, John the Baptist is not the door. John the Baptist is the only one who is preparing for the door, but he can never be the door. If he brings us to the door, then we can enter through the door. But John the Baptist, he can never bring us inside the holy tabernacle. He cannot bring us to to God. He can never bring us to heaven. The only way is only Jesus Christ. As Jesus Christ, as John the Baptist was living his life. When he was taken uh, and he was put in cell, the time he sent disciples to Jesus Christ, he go and ask from Jesus whether he's the real Messiah or should we wait for another Messiah? Does it mean that John the Baptist doesn't know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah? It is not like so. John the Baptist knew very well that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. But what does he want? He want also the, his disciples not to be wrong and to wrong and to look unto him. But he wanted the disciple to move their hearts and see Jesus and belong to Jesus and enter through Jesus Christ to heaven. It is not that Jesus, uh, John the Baptist, never knew very well, but he's the one who knew very well. Who doesn't know Jesus Christ? Who didn't know that Jesus Christ was the Messiah? John the Baptist is the one who is only speaking and also telling people and notifying people about Jesus Christ. He's the one who knew very well. But the disciples, they didn't have the eye to see clearly. He, they didn't have the eye to see Jesus Christ as Messiah. That's why he's doing the work of awakening up their hearts so that they can move and belong to Jesus Christ. In the book of Isaiah chapter 53, we shall see that. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Who have believed our report, and who is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He had no form, no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were as it, as it were our face from him. He was despised and was esteemed, and we esteemed him not. Isaiah chapter fifty-three is speaking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had no form, had no comeliness, he had no beauty in him. That's why Jesus Christ, when he met together with the Pharisees, they could not really believe in him. There was no good quality in Jesus Christ. He was of low quality. He was of low what standard. That's why when they saw him, even the people of his village could not believe in him. They knew him. He was son of a carpenter. They were living with the brethren. But... They never knew the true taste of Jesus Christ. When you look at the gate, it doesn't have so many good quality. It was not made of gold. It was not made of silver, nor precious, uh, precious uh, stones. But it was of neat work. It was made of only neat. Then when we think about it, the gate, it was not of great value. That's why people can despise it. But when we think about it carefully, when we think about it deeply, this gate is very colorful. From afar, it was made of four colors. It was made of purple, white, red, and blue. Purple is the color of the king. The four colors here represent the four books of gospel, that is, I, Joe, I, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the four gospel books. The purple, it represents uh, the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew, Jesus Christ is esteemed, uh, it is, is, is shown as a king. When you see the book of Matthew, there is the genealogy of Jesus Christ. 
this means what in uh, in the in the tabernacle purple kara purple was uh, in long time ago kara purple was the kara of the king why was it the kara of the king actually kara purple long time ago there was no dye that's why purple was made from small insects so that means it was very expensive it took a lot of time to make or to color color purple that's why the color purple what who were putting on purple was only the kings so the book of matthew represents jesus christ as the king at the gate of tabernacle also there is color red red uh, represent uh, uh, the book of mark the uh, the book of mark there is no genealogy why because jesus christ is represented as a servant it is called also the servant gospel or cow gospel when we see here there is only jesus who was working continually but there was no honor unto jesus when we see uh, kara white it represent the book of luke luke was a physician that's why he is the one who knew human body very well that's why we call the book of luke as a person's uh, gospel when we go we see there is also the color blue it shows a uh, sky it shows heaven it shows jesus christ as son of god it's also called ego's gospel this shows that all the people the four colors represented all the people from all dimension or from all side all the people can come and can enter into uh, the tabernacle not it doesn't matter whether they are of low quality or they are of low standard or they are great people all people could come and enter to tabernacle when we see uh, the four colors also the four gospel also it is representing the four kinds of people who are living in middle east in the middle east they are jews they are christian they are romans and also they are arabian the jews are represented by kara purple also kara red it represents uh, the romans and also kara white it is representing the arabians and kara blue is representing the christians when we see the four colors uh, showing that all oh, all kind of people all manner of people can enter into the tabernacle this shows what it is not for the great it is not for the uh, low quality all people can access our tabernacle easily when we see tabernacle also it is very wide it its length was uh, 10 meters this shows what everyone from all it doesn't matter how many they are as long as they are there all people all can enter into the tabernacle it was uh, so good uh, so strategically and also so wide that all people can easily come in in the book of matthew chapter 22 there is a king who prepared a marriage for his servant for his son and now he sent his servant to go and bring people but the people who were bidden all of them refused to come that's why the king sent uh, the servant to go where to the highways and what he's telling them whoever you find all of them please invite them over it doesn't matter whether they are clean whether they are dirty whether they are rich whether they are poor whether they are whole whether they are blind tell them all to come inside the marriage the door was very wide all people can fit from whatever race from whatever family from whatever uh, uh standard of life this door is wide enough that can receive all people when we see from the bible the man who fell among the thief was the person who had lost all his dignity he lost everything that he was having and now this time he was halfway dead but such kind of a person also can enter into the holy tabernacle this kind of person also can meet together with jesus christ
the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. Also such a woman, such a dirty woman can meet and also can enter into the tabernacle through Jesus Christ. When we see the door of tabernacle, it was very wide to receive everyone. Also not only that, the, in the door it was not made of uh, it was not made of iron. It was made of soft material. This means what? This door did not have any rock. This means what? Any person, any time, can easily come and access, uh, access the tabernacle. This means what? Whether they are young, whether they are elderly, whether it is not very easy to enter. It was very, uh, the door was wide and very soft for all people to come and enter. When we see the Tower of Tabernacle, it was not to prevent anyone to enter. The material that made this tabernacle, it was very soft. That's why not, it was not hard for anyone to come and see. When we see the Bible in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 8, it says like this, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. The Bible is saying, I know your works. How are your works? Your works are very much wanting. They are very much lacking. They are very evil and they are very bad. But what the Bible is saying that, see, I have set before you an open door. Where is God setting an open door for us? It's because we are very weak, we are very evil, we are very dirty. That's why if the door is locked for us, we don't have any power to come in. That's why he has set the door open before us. What he's saying is that he knows that we have a ritual strength. For you have a ritual strength. We don't have much strength. That's why if the door is very hard for us to enter, we cannot receive salvation. When we see the Bible, the door is representing Jesus Christ. When we go through the door, we can live. John chapter 10 verse 9 is saying like this. He's saying, I am the door. By, by me, if any man entereth, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find uh, pastures. What does the Bible say? I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. That means what? Through the door, through Jesus Christ, we can be saved. There are other ways that can there be. These ways can never give salvation. The only way that can give salvation is the way which is Jesus Christ. That's why if we enter, we enter through Jesus Christ, we can all be saved. I hope all of you can go to heaven only through the true way, which is Jesus Christ. If you cannot find the door, then you are the one who is still doing something. If you cannot see the door, then you are living the life of Nicodemus. You who is trying to accomplish something by doing something, you are very evil and dirty and you can never enter to heaven kingdom. It is not by works. It is not out of diligence, whether you pray or not. If you can enter through the door, who is Jesus Christ, truly you can enter to heaven kingdom. Until next time, we shall end up here. Thank you.